So the next thing we want to do is we want to create counter bores for our uh, counter board holes. To do that, we're going to need some chain features. I'm going to go ahead and select, make sure that sub elements and highlight are turned on. I'm going to select this face. And with control held down, I'm going to select this face. And so I've got the, uh, the chamfer and the, the pocket face there that outlines the, uh, the wall of that pocket selected. I'm going to go up to the uh, chains toolbar. I can select auto chain here or I can select the uh, the wall feature. I'm going to go ahead and use auto chain and that creates two chains for me. It creates one that defines that pocket that we're going to make and it creates one that defines the chamfer that's on the top of the pocket. I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, the chain that defines the pocket Go over here to my solid mill traditional toolbar, select the pocketing operation. In the general tab, I'm going to make sure that I've got my 3 8 inch end mill selected. In the strategy tab, concentric out looks just fine. We'll, uh, it's picked these defaults based on the, uh, the geometry of the chain we've got. On the pocket tab, everything looks good. On the rough tab, I'm going to go ahead and select, so you've got, I remember I said don't ever plunge one of these end mills into the part. Well, there's an exception to that. If you've already drilled a hole, you can go ahead and plunge at the point where that hole is. So I'm going to plunge at point. I'm going to use the selection option here, and I'm going to come select the center point of the hole there, the end of the p-top. That will put in the, uh, the XY location for that and feed up over, that looks fine. Feed over, wrap it up. How about we just come straight up to exit the part on links. Everything looks fine, we'll go ahead and say okay. And let's go ahead and simulate our part now. Now if we only simulate, if we have this selected and we simulate, it will only simulate that operation. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything press play, it'll run the simulation. We don't see much of it if we're zoomed in like this except for it made that counter bore for us. Um, so that's great. We use the trick we learned earlier of copying our operations. So first let's make some more chains. Let's select that face. I'm gonna select the face that does the chamfer. So I've got the pocket and the chamfer selected. Go back to auto chain. Select my auto chain. Again it made me two chain features. We're going to use that um, chamfer chain later. But I'm going to go ahead and control click and copy that down. And so now I've got a feature here and I've got an operation here. And let's go ahead and run that simulation one more time. And we can zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Whoa, zoom's getting away from me here. Click in space to make sure we're going to operate the whole simulation. Press play, and almost perfect. So, what happened here that caused it to drive the tool through the material? Remember when we copied this operation down to here? Well, when we created this operation, on the rough tab here, we chose plunge at point and we selected the center of this pocket. So when we copied the operation down, it did the operation just perfectly, but it entered the part by plunging at this point and coming over. So we need to, on our new pocket, go back down to that entry point XY hit that selection tool and select the center of this hole. So again, hit the selection tool, find the end point there, click on it, that will select that. Go ahead and click OK and let's simulate one more time. Alright, so it ran that because I had that one highlighted, it just ran that. Let's go ahead and run the whole operation. And there you go. So we've got our counterboard holes, we've got our drilled and tapped holes. We are almost done with this part.